good afternoon to everybody and welcome at our flash session dedicated to Internet Literacy Book, a handbook. Uh, I'm Karina Kalugaru uh, and I'm ambassador and permanent representative of the Republic of Moldova to the Council of Europe, but at the same time I have the pleasure and honor to be the thematic coordinator of the Committee of Ministers for Information Policy. So, as you so at the entrance of this room, we will present today the, the new Internet Literacy Handbook, uh, and I will invite everybody to, to take and to, to look into this amazing book. So we have today the, the, the privilege to have the authors uh, um, of the handbook, which are present uh, next to me uh, during our discussions. So um, I will introduce um, here Janice Richardson, Elizabeth Milovidov, and Martin Schmaltzried. <laughs> Sorry if something. <laughs> Our discussions will be separated in three quiz. At the end uh, of our flash session, we'll have the prices because we are uh, before uh, end of the year and uh, before the Christmas. So the participants that will be more active, they will receive uh, the prizes. So now I will we'll go directly into the concrete discussions. And uh, the first quiz will be dedicated to the most, uh, uh, to the ideas that are uh, in the handbook. And uh, I will ask um, Elizabeth, what is the, Janice. Janice, what is the Internet Literacy Handbook and was, when was the first LH written and why is necessary to update it, taking into account that the Council of Europe has issued uh, this book in 2003? And 2006 and 2009. So please. <laughs> so good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for coming to this session. So what is the Internet Literacy Handbook? Well, I hope you can tell me because you've perhaps already opened it. It's our attempt to bring tools, resources, links, everything that a teacher would need to know under the same umbrella into a one-shop stop where they can gather this information, where parents, families also can find informa information, but also, and very importantly, issues that may impact human rights, ethical issues that these various forms of technology raise. And it's broken down, this new version is broken down into a number of sections which cover in turn inclusion, creativity, participation, fun, challenges, future. I think the important part of this, we had to update from 2003, obviously, because so much has happened in this field. Every time we update, new chapters are added until we have what you see inside the book today. I think we're, we're getting on to 30 chapters. The other big change of this book, which you're going to see, is rather than introducing a resource uh, rather than introducing an index, we've given users a quiz. And the quiz not only tells you what's in the booklet, but also tests your knowledge on what you will find in each chapter. So back to you. And that was my quiz. Now it's going to be your turn. Thank you very much. Um, it is true that the internet has developing and is developing uh, every hour and every minute. So we have many stakeholders, we have governments, we have society, we have internet providers, but most importantly, we have users of the internet. And uh, it's really important to be uh, very explicit uh, for the children, for the parents, for the teachers, how we can use the internet in the advantage and not in, the, in our disadvantage, or how we can be how we can protect our rights uh, to avoid uh, any kind of violations. So I will invite now Janice, uh, um, uh, Elizabeth, to, to tell us more why it was important now to update the handbook and how do you think that it can be used in, in a positive way um, 
by the people that are working in this field. Hello. Good afternoon. I'm so happy to see everyone here. I can't wait for the quiz. Um, to answer the question, um, it was so important to, to update the, the handbook because of all the new things that are happening. Uh, the new technologies, the Wi-Fi connected toys, the bots, the malware. There are so many things on the horizon that are both exciting uh, and beneficial to society, but we also have to know how to understand the, the risk and the benefits uh, in, a, in a way that is helpful for all. One of the things that was really interesting about this handbook uh, was the fact that we added more fact sheets and always keeping an eye out for the children, um, trying to have ideas for the classroom, best practices, because really at the heart of what we're doing for the Council of Europe, we're looking as, at children as the future. And so if they're able to understand and navigate uh, the internet, technology, and social media responsibly and safely, then we're very happy. Thank you. Martin, you, you have expertise to work in developing the programs for parents and uh, children. What do you think that is necessary, or at least how for a parent that doesn't know many things about the handbook can use it? Well, I think what's nice is that the handbook really starts at the beginning, even for a parent that has no idea. I mean, the first chapter is getting connected, so it's really about somebody that has no technical knowledge uh, oh, really an introduction at how the internet works and it just works up from there. So, you know, chapter by chapter you go deeper and deeper into what the web is, uh, the different facets, the different uh, things that you find uh, from basic things like emailing to more complex things like big data and, you know, what, what, what's at stake there. So I think what's nice is that regardless of your, your kind of area or, or expertise level, um, you really have, you can work through these, these uh, different fact sheets um, based on your knowledge, from starting from nothing or starting from something, uh, and work your way up and really build uh, this kind of knowledge. And, and what's also nice is that every fact sheet is also broken up into different parts, and you always have, you know, some key points about like ethics, ethical considerations. What are the issues? Um, what are like some recommendations, uh, some things that you need to think about, some activities you can do. So really for each of them, you have some interactive things that you can do. And so, so that's kind of the two, the two reasons why I think you know, it's, it's good for any, any parent, any family, and any team. Thank you. And as uh, we begin our discussions, we have three quiz. The first quiz is, uh, and it will be the questions to the audience as well. Uh, what are the most relevant sections of the handbooks that you are seeing in front of you? <laughs> Maybe we can just switch to Elizabeth. Uh, in order to be easier for uh, all of you, I will ask Elizabeth <laughs> to. Explain to us the most important uh, elements. Um, actually, I won't explain. I will have you go ahead and look through. You'll see up on the, on the board there, uh, you'll see the, the six different areas. And just take a peek, because what we're going to do uh, in just a second is that we will go through some of the questions, but I just want you to be a little familiar with what's inside. Nothing more at the moment. Um, later, you can tell us what you feel is the most relevant sections for your areas and your expertise, as we would very much like to know. Um, but I would like to just um, turn the floor over to Janice for a moment because you were going to talk about the, the contents and the objectives uh, of the Internet Literacy Handbook, and so I'm going to change the slide. Janice will just jump in. For those of you who've been following education over the past 20 years, you are possibly aware of something written by Jacques Delors, which has been taken up with, from, by educators across the world. And Jacques Delors really insisted that in fact, educating today, educating at a time when knowledge is renewed at such a rapid place, we instead have to focus on four objectives. One, learning to learn so that we can keep up to date. Two, learning to do. Three, learning to be. And four, learning to live together. And I would say that these are the principal objectives 
that are entwined right through this book. Um, Elizabeth, I believe that you were going to animate a quiz. Yes, 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 let's get going. <laughs> So, um, we're going to do a very, uh, thank you, Martin. We're going to do an interactive quiz. So please pay attention. As you know, there will be prizes. There will be. <coughs> and I'm having trouble with my clicker. I should probably get closer. There we go. Um, you will not get money. You're looking at the screen now. There's no money, but uh, you will have other prizes, okay? So, <laughs> so please stay with me. So the first quiz, and we also have to figure out, because we will be asking you several questions. Um, what, would, what do you think, Ambassador? Should they answer by themselves? Do they have a chance? We have three prizes. Or should they answer with teams? In the teams, it will be easier. OK, so then buddy up with a partner. Find somebody who looks really intelligent. <laughs> OK. Okay. You'll have to share the prizes. Yeah, you're going to have to share the prizes. And uh, Martin, are you going to keep track of who raises their hand first? Yes? Just, or you okay. just oh, look. Oh, it's speed. Yeah, okay. it's going to be speed, yes. You have just uh, 45 se seconds. Mm hmm Okay, so the very first question, and always because I'm so far, there we go. So who provided the four pillars of education, learning to know, learning to do, to be, and to live together that are now so applicable to digital citizenship. Oh, was it, uh, yeah, well, Janice didn't see all of my slides. <laughs> no, was it um, A, the Council of Europe? I think I'm gonna have to hand my clicker down. B, the European Commission? Nope, I'm gonna have to hand it down. Oh, it's working slowly. C, UNESCO? or D, the OECD? I already see one hand up in the far, far back. Thank you, Janice. <laughs> I thought I'd make the first one easy. Okay, so for that slide, that's everything that's on digital citizenship. And you guys can take a look in your handbook and you will see that that is fact sheet number 17. And in this fact sheet, it's divided up where we talk about the importance of education, we talk about ethical uh, considerations and risk. We have ideas for classroom work, and there are good practices. You will see that sort of division in every single fact sheet, but what I particularly like about this one is that we define digital citizenship, uh, digital footprints, digital identity, <laughs> digital literacy, digital rights, and e-democracy. So there you go. You now understand what's in fact sheet number 17. Okay, so now you're going to do a bit of a treasure hunt. So pull out your smartphones or your computers, and I would like you to find this web page. And on this web page, you will see what is the definition of citizenship. That's all I'm going to show you. And it's over. So it's starting. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Find it. What is the definition of digital citizenship that was on the website page of the Council of Europe? And obviously, I'm making sure that you understand where to find all these fabulous resources that we've worked so hard to produce for you. I'm looking for some hands. Oh, and what does the wait, definition wait. say? This. Oh, the, the, right over here, but he put his oh, hand up okay. first. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, okay, go, go in the far back. On, On the microphone, please. And what does it say? Digital citizenship refers to? The competent and positive engagement with digital technologies, uh, participating actively and responsibly, uh, sure. being involved in a double process of lifelong learning, and continuously defending human dignity. And are you, what way, website are you on? Uh, that would be the coe.int, right? Yes, but you're supposed to be under the Digital Citizenship Education webpage. Yes. <laughs> uh, uh, it's trickier than you thought. Go ahead. Mm. Oh, sorry, I'm not. Uh, I will defer to the ambassador. It's just in front of us. Yeah. Mm. Digital citizenship refers to the ability to engage positively, critically, and competently in the digital environment, drawing on the skills of effective communication and creation to practice forms of social participation that are respectful of human rights and dignity through the responsible use of technology. Thank you. 
And obviously the reason why is because we're also working on a digital citizenship handbook, which we'll be seeing that will follow this same module. You'll see this in the next year, uh, and that is with the Digital Citizenship Education Project. So for digital parenting, is everybody ready? What is the number one recommended step for parenting in the digital age? Is it open communication? Open Wi-Fi or open the wine? Okay. <laughs> Please. Uh, the, uh, Good. Yes. So, thank you very you. much. <laughs> as Janice gave one away, I had two as well. So for digital parenting, um, you will see that this is fact sheet 18, and we talk about both positive and proactive uh, digital parenting. And what's also interesting in this section, of course it's my favorite section, is that we really try to um, help parents understand that there are so many incredible opportunities online, but that they have to be with their children. And while I do always like to say to bring their offline skills and parenting skills online, I know that it sounds like uh, I'm telling them that they can just easily parent uh, online. It's not the same thing, obviously, but you do have to be just as vigilant uh, and, and, and a responsible guardian of your child's reputation online and offline. Okay, so what are two types of cyber crimes that involve demands of money or Bitcoin to stop the harassing activity? Is it A, malware and bots, B, ransom and sextortion, C, phishing and spamming, D, clickjacking and 419s? And I'm not looking who's looking, who sees who answered quickly. I think it's here, right? Uh, the lady. Well, it was. <laughs> it was over there. It was over there. It was yes. over there. Exactly. Yes. The answer is B. Uh, ra ransomware and sextortion. So, if you would look on pages 123 and 124, uh, you are now on our fact sheet for cybercrime. And there you will find the definitions of malware and bots and phishing and spamming. And I particularly like uh, clickjacking. I think that was one that Martin may have uh, <laughs> updated, which is the type of scam on social networks where we see a lot of that where they're trying to bait young people uh, to, to click there. And I think it's just about done for me. Oh, no, I'm going to. So there you go. That's just showing you the fact sheet number 18. And... This is also to show another project of the Council of Europe, because we mentioned sextortion. Um, if you were outside, you would have seen that there are uh, brochures um, on parenting in the digital age, which is for the online exploitation, um, against the online exploitation of children, uh, for the online protection of children against sexual exploitation and sexual abuse. And these um, pamphlets are available in French and in English, and they, uh, we have some outside for you. Another question? What is the name of this little guy? Ah, that's interesting. No, nobody from the Council of Europe can answer. <laughs> no, you might have to. Nobody knows? Well, that's great. You're, you will find him in there, but uh, you won't find him referenced with a little picture. I will go ahead and tell you what. I'll give you one more chance. Somebody want to help a, a team to get some chocolate or prizes? No? Okay, you can go on your search engines. Go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> oh, you found it. Yes, thank you. You really want that prize. <laughs> So, the, yeah, exactly. This is Kiko um, and the Hand. Um, and because we were talking about sextortion and, um, and sexual abuse, um, this was another project and initiative by the Council of Europe. And it helps children three to seven understand that their bodies belong to them um, and that there are good and bad secrets and that there are good and bad touches. And um, you can see down below that there are videos, books, and posters, and you can see all of the different languages that Kiko the Hand is available in. I think you have to click for me. Yeah. Okay, it's over to Martin now. 
Okay, so I have data, especially the ones looking forward, but when I reread them, sometimes I feel like I'm looking backward. <laughs> That's how fast the internet is advancing, but so we'll go ahead with some of more technical um, questions. Um, this one is from the virtual reality um, fact sheet, and the question is, what does the term hikikomori refer to? Uh, oh, you already, we already have one. Well, wait a minute, okay. there's another problem. Let's see the choices. But let's see the choices first. <laughs> Modern way of executing a harakiri, so a suicide. Uh, the Japanese word for geek. Being withdrawn from social life or a fan, uh, a fan of a specific type of online anime. Well, I mean, you raised your hand first, so. Uh, yes, exactly. So um, th the reason that we put that there is because um, virtual environments are very specific. Um, they, they really immerse people in a way that they feel that they are in the virtual world. Um, and there is some, you know, some uh, increased potential for withdrawing from social life or getting addicted for certain types of people. So that's why we wanted to stress basically, you know, that there are certain issues, certain new issues that, that emerge with uh, virtual spaces and that you need to be careful, but also recognizing all the potential there is for social interactions and, you know, so please check it out. Uh, next question. Oh, the oh there, that's, uh, that's uh, fact sheet 25. It's all the way at the back. Um, here's one about artificial intelligence. Where did the first hotel uh, fully managed by robots open? In which country? So can we see the propositions? Just roll them out, all of them. Yeah. So United States, Japan, South Korea, or Germany? Yeah. Japan. That's correct. So you were first. Good, good. Yeah, kind of obvious, I guess. Um, so yeah, again, artificial intelligence. I think uh, this one is also a very important chapter. Um, it's, it, it is kind of forward-looking, looking at all the potential that there is for you know, artificial intelligence, but all the ethical considerations on, across many different topics, be it self reliance on you know, automated processes like self-driving cars, what happens if it breaks down, what happens about security, privacy, um, and, and even some more deeper philosophical questions, what happens in a world which is fully automated where you have nothing to do and you're just served by robots, is that something that human beings will be glad about, satisfied about. I mean, it makes me think of Matrix when Agent Smith says, you know, to, to Neo, well, when we first created the Matrix, we created a paradise, you know, for humans. And they wouldn't have it. They were just refusing to believe that this was the real world. Um, and it's kind of along the same lines, you know, raising some real uh, uh, things to think about, about, you know, the uh, artificial intelligence uh, and the, the technologies that are waiting for us. So. Um, the last question, what does a hop refer to in the context of the internet? Can you just roll out all the possibilities? An acronym for services online offering high online privacy, a term used by millennials when quickly checking an app, a short for hope used in certain memes, or the redirection of data between two s routers. Okay, that, the hand shot up right there. Yours first? Okay, sorry. Well, then, go ahead. So that's uh, D. The it's D, indeed. So, this, this, is a, this, was a very, this is the first chapter, actually, so you might think, wow, this is very technical or whatever, but that is exactly the intention of this fact sheet, is to really go back from the basics. There's so many people right now that have no idea how the Internet actually does work. Um, and, you know, I mean, when you talk to children, they're just saying, well, I don't know, it's via satellites, it's via, you know. They don't even realize that you know, your data gets chopped up into tiny little pieces and then it gets bounced around and goes through your phone line to your ISP and then it goes bounced around between routers and then ends up in a data center and then whenever somebody wants to look at it, he has to go and connect to his email which then goes to the data center. And I think it's absolutely essential to know this so that you can really represent yourself, okay, when I'm sending an email, where does my data go? Um, what happens to it? And what about when somebody consults my data? Does it get copied around? Uh, where does it end? Uh, who has influence over it? Um, I think these are, it's really essential for, for people to understand how the technology works in order to sort of build up Next on question. that knowledge and to behave more responsibly. So I hope you enjoyed that and please discover. Okay, so it's not yet over. We still have a couple more chances to win some, well, it wasn't cash, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, can you, 
for me. So there we go. I'm just showing you this picture, another treasure hunt, to find this website. So to give you the clue, it's what is the name of the first video on the Council of Europe's YouTube channel under the Children's Rights Playlist? There you go. Time's up. Time's up. Come on, come on, go quickly. I see hands kind of wavering in the air. Yes, you've got it? Sexualized images used in revenge, brackets, revenge porn. Exactly, yes. thank you. Very fast, <laughs> I like this team. Um, obviously one of the important things that I'm trying to show you here is that the Council of Europe has uh, a YouTube channel and there are lots of videos there for you and they're available for you in different languages. Uh, for this, this was the, um, again, the project for the Lanzarote Convention and uh, the, if you go on the children's rights playlist, you will find 79 videos. Oh, can you go back one more? Okay, just wanted to show you one last thing, which is that um, all of the resources that we've mentioned, um, you can easily just go on the Council of Europe website. Um, you just look under children's rights, and then again, resources and publications, and you will find them all easily available for downloads, including the literacy, the internet literacy handbook. Uh, we have a few paper copies now, but uh, you can download away at will, and we want you to really enjoy it. If you have any feedback, we would love to hear it. If there's things that are not included that will be done for the next version, I don't know what year that will be, please let us know. And I think now it's the time that everybody's waiting for. The Everybody is waiting for the gifts, but before the gifts, we'll end by the conclusions. So the Council of Europe, uh, it's an intergovernmental organization that thinks not just about politics, and uh, the measures and setting standards for the governments and law enforcement structures, but at the same time, it's promoting the literacy towards the internet and children's rights as well. So we had in front of us today a new version of Internet Literacy Handbook that answer to the questions of the children, of the parents and teachers. It's a very useful tool and we are inviting you to use it and uh, uh, to ensure that we have internet safe uh, uh, promotion and all of our rights are protected uh, by ourselves. At the same time, understanding where are our, our rights, where are our obligations and how we should be responsible by using the internet. So I hope that uh, it was a useful discussions with all of you and uh, the gifts are going to the most active uh, participants but at the same time, I think it will go to every uh, table that we have, round of table that we have in front of us. So we are, you are enjoying uh, the end of uh, this day and of this flash session. Thank you.